Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. You know, we've been in this series called The Lord's Prayer together the past couple weeks. We really thought, you know, starting our year 2023 in prayer was really important. And something that just, you know, as I was thinking about, as I was praying about it, prayer became a big focus or a thought on how do we um, prepare for 2023? How do we get our minds, how do we get our souls, how do we prepare ourselves for 2023? And we were going to, and what we've been doing, if you've been with us, is we've been going verse by verse through The Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6, we've been going through it verse by verse by verse. And, and today we're in the third verse, um, which, which is on daily bread. And so if we go to this, it's Matthew uh, chapter 6 verse 11. And it says this, give us today the food we need. Right, that's, that's it. Give us today the food that we need. And we're going to be talking about this. How, what does it mean to... When we pray, you know, give us the food we need. Uh, give us today our daily bread as you might have it also. How do we do this? And I heard this story one time, and, and I don't know if it's a true story or if it's not a true story. But the story is that there's this woman, she's this widow, and she doesn't have anything. She doesn't have food. And every day she would get down on her knees. She would get down on her knees and she would just pray, God, fill my pantry. God, fill my pantry. God, fill my pantry. And how many of us have maybe prayed that prayer before? Fill my pantry, right? She's praying this prayer. And all of a sudden, one day, she hears this knock on the door. And she opens her door. And on her, on her porch is all the food that would fill her pantry, right? So she opens her door, this knock. And she sees all the food she could ever need. Everything that would be to fill her pantry. And she just goes, God did it. God did it. God did it. God did it, right? And all of a sudden, this man jumps up from behind the bushes. He jumps up from behind the bush. He says, I'm your neighbor, and I'm an atheist. And I, I went, and I went to the store. I went to the grocery store. I got in my car. I went to the grocery store. I bought all this food to put on your porch to show you God doesn't exist. And she looks at him, and she just doesn't know what else to say. So she says, God did it. God did it. God did it, right? And he goes, no, you're not listening to me. I'm, I went to the store, I put your groceries on my credit card, I drove back, and I put them on your porch, and I hid in the bushes to prove to you God doesn't exist. And she looks at him and goes, God did it, and he made the devil pay for it. And it's to, to prove God sometimes provides for us in ways we don't understand, in ways that seem very odd and very weird. God did it. And I think for all of us, we have moments where we have desperate needs and we are fully reliant on God's grace and provision. We all have moments where that is where we are, is we're waiting and we're praying and we're on our knees saying, God, I need a miracle. I need your provision. I need you to show up. I need you to provide for me. And these are the prayers that we pray. Again, Matthew 6, 11, give us today the food we need. When Jesus taught us to pray, he said it's very important for you to pray for your day to day for what you need. Give us today the food that we need. And so I have three things today that I think uh, when we pray, give us today our daily bread or give us today the food we need. What does this teach us when we pray? Because this is a, a prayer that we pray on full reliance on God. Fully reliant. And so number one, what this prayer, give us today our daily bread or give us today the food we need. What this teaches us, number one, is to be content. Right? It teaches us to be content. When we're praying, give us today the food we need. It's saying, God, I need you today and I'm going to be content with what I already have because I know you're already providing what I desperately need the most. Every time we take a breath, we're being grateful for the air that we get to breathe. It says, give us today our daily prayer. And this is interesting when we say, you know, it teaches us to be content. Because when we pray this part of the prayer, we're making a verbal declaration that we aren't self-sufficient. How many times in our lives do we think we're self-sufficient, right? I can do it on my own. Watch me, right? I'm strong. I have a great education. 
I got a great paycheck. I'm going to be okay. But how many of you know sometimes what we need is not something we already have? You know, I've heard so many people, you know, they have all this money, yet they feel so broken and desperately alone. What they need provision for is relationship and connection. You know, you might have all the money you ever would need, but do you have the people to actually have relationship in that? I think we need to realize that we are not self-sufficient. We can't actually make it on our, own, on our own. And when we pray, give us today the food we need, we're saying, God, I need you. And it's a very humbling prayer to pray. Because we are saying, God, I can't do it on my own. And I know for some of us, in, maybe in your own home, you don't need to pray. You, know, I, you have the food in your pantry, in your fridge that you need for today. But there's so many people in our world that they don't. Where this prayer is a prayer of, if I don't pray this, I might not actually eat today. And I think for us, in a different context, is we sometimes in North America, we don't realize our need for God because we feel like we can do it always on our own. Right? We can gas up our car, even if it's expensive, because we can just throw it on the credit card. Right? How many times do we think we're so self-sufficient in our life, and we see this so clearly, God teaching this principle in the book of Exodus. If you remember in the book of Exodus, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of exited uh, the, the Egypt. They're on their own. They're in the wilderness. And they're hungry, right? And so this is what happens when God shares with Moses how he will be feeding the Israelites in the desert, right? This is what he says. Then the Lord said to Moses, look, I'm going to rain down food from heaven for you. Each day the people can go out and pick up as much, uh, as much food as they need for that day. I will test them in this to see whether or, not, or whether or not they will follow my instructions. And on the sixth day, they will gather food, and it will be, and when they prepare it, it will be twice as much as usual. So this is the moment where God says, okay, what's going to happen because you need food? It's like going to start raining f- manna from heaven. Food's going to just like come down. But he, he says this. I'm going to test them in this. He says, I'm only going to give them enough for today. I'm only going to give them enough for today. They have to have the faith. They have to be content with what they have today and have faith that tomorrow it's going to come again. For all of us, this is what we need to realize is that you will have enough for today. You might look in the future and say, what about tomorrow? God says, don't worry about tomorrow. I've already given you what you need today. Have faith that tomorrow I'm going to give it to you again. I think we need to realize that, that, that we have what we need to make it through today and tomorrow's gonna bring its own struggle, it's gonna bring its own need and we don't have to worry about tomorrow because God will provide what you need when you need it and I think a lot of us, when we pray, give us today the food we need. We pray it out of tradition, we don't pray it out of actual need because we don't realize our need for God. A lot of us, we, we, we've kind of grown up in, in church or we've grown up in, 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 this, in, in this. And so when we pray this, it's just part of what we do. But it has to be something that we actually need. Because I think we have to understand our desperate need for God in our life. I think a lot of us, we don't. But we have to learn to be content with what we have. God's solution to the Israelites' need was to build their faith, right? To, to say, hey, I'm gonna give you the food you need for today. Tomorrow, it's gonna rain again. We need to be content and we need to realize that he will always provide. It might seem impossible. I think a lot of us, we're in a situation in our life right now, maybe with our finances, where we look at it and we say, this is impossible. That might be where you are. You might think, that I, I don't even know if I can make it one more day or one more week. And so what we do is we don't sleep at night because all we're thinking about is the bills we have to pay. So so what happens is we're not resting. We're not getting enough sleep. So then we're so worried. We're spending all our energy, all our time worried rather than resting. And that leaves us so broken and so exhausted. He says, give us this day our daily bread. Give us the food that we need today. Because just because you want something doesn't mean you need something. Right? And I know like we know this, like we've heard it like a thousand times, but it's like, it's so true. How many times do we just, are we just praying for God to provide what we want, not what we need? Because just because you want something doesn't mean that you're going to get it. 
You know, you might pray, God, I need a new house. My house is getting a little bit too small, right? My, I can't park in my garage because I own too much things, so I need to buy a bigger house so I can fill my house with the things I already own. But then you buy a new house, and you're like, I need a new couch because this one doesn't match the scheme, right? It doesn't, the colors are wrong. So we're like, I need, no, I need to buy a new couch. We put our old couch in our garage, and we're like, God, I need a new house. So we put all this energy, we go, we buy this new house, and then three months later, we're like, I can't afford this house. God, provide a miracle. And he's like, I did with your first house, but you wanted another one, and now you're realizing you don't need it. You wanted it, but you don't need it. And I think for all of us, we have things in our life that we think we need, but we don't. And when we say, God, give us today our daily bread, this is a human necessity, a human need for us to survive. A lot of what we're praying for is just to make our lives better. Right? To make our lives, you know, more extravagant, right? Give us today our daily bread. Because when we pray this prayer, we open our eyes to the things we need and not the things that we want. And Paul realized this deeply in 2 Corinthians 12, right? This is his prayer. Three times I begged the Lord. He didn't just pray. He begged the Lord to take it away. And each time, God responds by, with this. My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. And then he says this, which great hard place to get to. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. I've, I've met a lot of people in my life Usually when you meet somebody, the first thing that they don't, they, don't, they don't say is like, man, I'm like the weakest person you'll ever meet. You know, like we don't, we don't go around boasting about our struggle and our weakness. Right? We don't because we're embarrassed. He says he begged three times to take it away. Just because you ask God for something that you want doesn't mean you're going to get it. His grace is all that you need. He is sufficient for you. And we need to learn to be content in him by praying, you are my provider, not me. And that's what this prayer does. It says, you are my provider, I am not. Give us this day, our daily bread teaches us to be fully reliant on God for all that we need. That's number one. Praying this prayer teaches us to be content. Number two, it teaches us to have faith, right? So sometimes it's a scary prayer when you're like, I don't know what tomorrow's gonna look like. You know, our faith grows by praying this prayer so much. Our faith is not in our own abilities, and I think oftentimes it's in our abilities or education or what we have or in our own strength. That's where our faith lies. But our faith, we have to shift our focus from us to him he will provide for you. You know, there's a big difference between hoping something will happen and believing something will happen, right? I don't know if anyone's like a big like NFL fan. I'm a big NFL fan. Last night was one of the craziest things I've ever witnessed in my life. For those of you who don't know, the, the, it's playoffs, wild card weekend, and there's a team at halftime, they were up 27 to seven. The game's pretty much over. They ended up losing that game 31 to 30. They lost. They were, up, they were up by 1.27 points and they lost the game. And I think it's interesting because when we have our backs against the wall as humans, we basically have two options. We can hope that we're gonna succeed. Right? Like, God, I hope, I hope it's gonna happen. And there's a difference between hoping and believing. Do you believe that God will provide for you or do you hope he will? There's a difference. I mean, hoping God will good, but do you believe it? Some of us, we say, God, give us this day our daily bread. And then we spend 50, like two hours trying to figure it out. Like, okay, how can I do it? Right? Do you believe that God will provide everything that you need? And Abraham, he had a moment of faith boosting provision from God in Genesis 22. And this is what it says. Genesis 22 verse 6 to 8. So Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders while he carried the fire and a knife. As the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father? He said, yes, my son, Abraham replied. Uh, we have the fire for the altar. We're, 
we, we have everything we need for the altar, but where is the sheep for the altar? Where, where is the animal to sacrifice? And Abraham, this faith, he says, God will provide a sheep for the burnt, burnt offering, my son. And Abraham answered, and they both walked on together. Now, just imagine this moment, right? The son that you've been praying for, that you've been believing for, that you've been doing things you shouldn't do to try and get. He's done over and over and over, and he's in this moment, and then he's, God says, yo, it's your time. We're going to sacrifice your son on the mountain. And Abraham goes, okay. So he packs his son up. And again, imagine the son, right? He's walking, carrying this wood, not knowing he's the, he's the offering. He goes, where's the sheep, dad? Dad's like, God will provide it, son. I can imagine his mind thinking, because I remember when I was a kid, and just not understanding something, having a lot of questions. Where's the sheep? He's like, God will provide. He's like, yeah, but I don't see it. <laughs> like, I, it's either me or you, right? Like, there's two of us. One of us is going to die today. Imagine that faith that Abraham had to say, no, God will provide the sheep. God will provide the sheep. And that faith is, is, is incredible. Because again, if you remember in Genesis 21, verse 1 to 5, right? This is when it says this, the Lord kept his word and did for Sarah exactly what he had promised. She became pregnant, right? His wife. And she gave birth to a son for Abraham in his old age. This happened at just the time God had said it would. And Abraham named their son Isaac. Eight days after Isaac was born, Abraham circumcised him as God had commanded. Abraham was 100 years old when Isaac was born. That's some crazy provision. And I think the story, there's so much in it, I don't have time, but I think sometimes God will ask you to sacrifice the things he's given you. Sometimes God will ask you to sacrifice the provision he's already given you. And I, this is the test. He's saying, are you willing to give up what I've already given you for the more that I have for you? And so when this moment, this moment, this is what happens. He says, I'm just going to go. I'm obedient. Why? Because I was 100 years old and I had a son that shouldn't happen. So I know he's going to provide again. When God provided, you with you, provided for you in the past, do you remember that? Or do you forget it because you're so scared of the future, you forget what you already have? We can't forget. Don't worry. God will provide. I have seen it. And he says, I will see it again. And then verse 9, Genesis 22. And when they arrived at the place where God had told them to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son Isaac. We don't get a lot of detail of that moment, but I wish I could see what happened, right? All right, son, hop on. You know, like, this is it. He's like, where's the sheep? He's like, God will provide. <laughs> and then Abraham picked up his knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. At that moment, the angel of the Lord called the, uh, to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way, for now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in the place of his son. And Abraham named the place Yahweh Jireh or Jehovah Jireh, which we sang about earlier. The Lord will provide. And today, to this day, people still use that as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. You know, Jehovah Jireh, again, is one of the many names that we have for God. One of the many things that we, that we sing about, that we believe Jehovah Jireh. And it means the Lord will provide. God is our provider. You know, God provided a sacrifice to save Isaac. And that action was foreshadowing, right? The provision of God sending his son to die on the cross instead of you and instead of me. It's a beautiful moment. Foreshadowing the beauty of what was to come. You know, the greatest provision God will ever give you in your life is when you enter into a relationship with him because he saved you from death. That's the greatest provision you will ever have in your life. That's the, the, his grace is sufficient. His son, Jesus, is sufficient for you. He is our provider. He steps to the cross in my place. He steps to the cross in your place to give us the greatest gift humanity could ever receive himself. And I think sometimes we take that so for granted 
But the reality is that is all we need. That is it. His grace is sufficient for us. And do you have faith to pray this prayer and believe it? Do you believe God will provide for you? Like, really? Do you believe it? I think when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we have to stop praying it as like a recital. We have to pray it as a reality. Give us today the food we need. When you look around you and all you see is nothing, and we've all been in moments where we look around and we say, I'm, this is helpless, this is hopeless. I don't believe there's a future. This might be the end, right? We've all had moments. And some of us really recently, we have moments where we think it's the end. We don't know if we can go one more day. I think we've all had moments like that. But when you see nothing, it's a time for us to look to him because he has everything we need. We get to the end of our rope, we get to the end of the journey, we get so tired, exhausted, go to him, he will give you rest. Do you trust him with tomorrow or are you just worried about tomorrow, all right? I think most of the time, I think I've said this before, but I think most of the time we, bury, we worry about everything and pray about nothing. And this is what it says in Philippians, right? Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Are you going to put the limited energy that you have into worrying or into praying? That's the difference. I think some of us, we become experts at worry. Like we got our PhD in worrying. We spent decades and decades and decades in constant worry. We've gotten very good at it. In fact, we've gotten so good at it that we actually have trained other people to be worried as well. I think as leaders, as pastors, as, as, as parents, as friends, we need to lead each other into prayer and not worry. We need to learn how to pray about everything. Because when we worry, it adds stress. When we worry, it makes us tired. But when we pray, it gives us the peace that passes all understanding. I would rather live in peace than live in worry. Peace is way more beautiful and way more restful than worry is. And then number three, what praying this prayer teaches us is it teaches us the miraculous. When we pray, I love this, because when we pray, give us today the food we need, I just picture myself when I pray, I picture myself taking like a step back and like just watching, you know, like waiting. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? I'm telling you, in my life, and I'm sure in your life, time after time, he comes through at the right time. <laughs> he doesn't come through on your time. I'm sure Isaac would have preferred not being placed on an altar that day, right? Like, I think that would have been his preference. Probably Abraham would have been his preference. God's like, oh, I'm waiting. God is a God of the miraculous. And when you read through Scripture, we see moment after moment and story after story of miraculous provision over and over and over and over and over. But some of us, when we read through Scripture, we see it as just that. We see it as stories. That's a cool story. That's a lot of bread and a lot of fish. Sweet. We see them as stories because we don't think that they can actually be part of our story. But the thing is, we're still living in God's story. It's not like God, like, you know, Revelation, boom. God's like, I'm done. Have fun. He's still moving. He's still working. He's still doing the miraculous. And Jesus taught his disciples something so powerful in Matthew 14. And we know this story, I think. Matthew 14, 15. That evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place. And it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. <laughs> and Jesus, I love this. That isn't necessary. You feed them. I... I <laughs> Again, I like to put myself in these moments. I 
Hello. Welcome back. Imagine you, you, hello, imagine you're in there. When kids are hungry, they're crazy, right? We know this. Okay, I picture the crowd just in this like turmoil of absolute hanger, right? And Jesus is like, they're hungry, you feed them. The disciples are like, no, like, that's expensive, like you have you seen my bank statement jesus like i can't afford that he's like you feed them right and they said uh, after this you know nest and you feed them but we have only five loaves of bread and two fish that's barely enough for the 13 of us man what about the thousands of people and they answered and then it says this verse 18 bring them here he said then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Just Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the bread, uh, the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. They, they all ate as much as they wanted and afterward the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day in addition to all the women and children. So Jesus says this, that's unnecessary. You feed them. They say, I, we can't do it. He says, bring them to me. He blesses it and then they go and they feed the people. Right, it says that he broke the bread, gave it to them, and they went out and distributed it to the people. When there's a need in your life, we go to God and say, I can't do this on my own. We don't have the resources. I don't have the bread. I, like, well, this is the limit, that I, the limited stuff I have. He says, give the limited you have to me, and I will do the miraculous with what you have. Some of us, we don't give what we have. We don't trust God that he's going to do the miraculous because what we look at our life is so small and we say, my, my small isn't enough for what's in front of me. He says, give me what you have because every command of Jesus comes with his power. Every command he has for you comes with the miracle. You know what the reality is? That fish and those loaves were not enough to feed all those people. It's simple math. It wasn't enough. But when our not enough is in his hands, it becomes more than enough. Twelve baskets of leftovers. When Jesus commands us, he wants our involvement. You give them something to eat. You know, God will provide, but often he uses you to bring the miracle. He might not write a check to pay off all your debt. He might not just like open your door one day and there's a check for like $20,000 to pay off your student loans. That'd be amazing. But you know what sometimes he does? He gives you the job. He gives you the energy. He gives you the health. Sometimes you see it crazy, but sometimes it's, we think it's so small, but then we look back, we're like, man, this moment changed my entire life. I think we all have had an area in our life where we need provision in right now. I think we all do. It might be financial, it might be relational, it might be spiritual might be health. I don't know what it is. But I think we have to pray, God, Jesus, give me today the food I need. Give me today the energy that I need. Give me today what I need to keep going. You know, Lamentations 3.22 says this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh every morning. His faithful love is more than enough because his mercies are renewed every day. Now the Israelites, they had to have faith. I imagine the first day, if you read, they read the story, the first day they like look at the ground like, what is this? What is this? I imagine they're like, some of them are like, I'm keeping this, man. Like, we don't have any food, I'm keeping this. Next day is rotten fresh food the next day every morning fresh new his mercies are new every morning do you believe that do you believe that your needs will be met do you believe that his mercies will come for you in your life when we pray give us today our daily bread we are trusting him with our needs tomorrow we're trusting him with our needs today because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring we don't know what we're going to have to spend our time our energy our money tomorrow, right? We, we just know today. We might not know what tomorrow will bring, but we know the one who does. 
So I'd rather trust him with my future than trust me with my future. You know, one person who taught me faith and taught me to trust in God is, is my mom, who's right, right there. That's my mother. She's right in the room. This is the person in my life that's taught me this in, in ways that I can't even probably comprehend or even begin to explain. The person I look to as inspiration when it comes to faith, when it comes to trusting God, because I know that sometimes it's not easy. I know sometimes it's not easy when you look at your future and you're like, I don't know how I'm going to provide for my children. I don't know. And this is the space my, my mother was in. And I remember this, the story is she, she would always, she was always praying, right? Always seeking counsel, praying. But I believe she never stopped praying. She never stopped believing that God was going to provide when it was really, really hard. I think we've all gone through really hard moments and you know, she was trying to find a place to live. She couldn't find a place to live. And she's looking at basement suites, for like one bedroom, you know, three kids, like figure this out, two bedrooms, you know. She like share with my sister, me and my brother would share. We like try and make it work. You know, that's a tough place to be. Like I can't afford something that's gonna fit us all. So I'm gonna, you know, my mom willing to make sacrifices, willing to, you know, give up comfort, give up privacy in order for us to be together, right? And then one day she gets a call from our pastor in Calgary. She says, I know you've been looking for a house to live in and we have this very unique opportunity. Someone in our church is moving away and they're looking to pay someone $500 to house it for them monthly. We're looking for somebody to house it and you know, the company's gonna pay for it. Well, they're just looking for someone to be there and make sure the house is okay for at least the next year. You know, and he goes like, this is like an over 2,000 square foot house. It's got four bedrooms. It's in a safe, beautiful part of the city. Are you interested, <laughs> right? I think he probably knew the answer already. You know what I'm talking about? Mom's like, yeah, I'm interested. And those of us who know that doesn't happen pretty well ever, someone paying you to live in their beautiful home, right? I don't know what you're walking through. I don't know what you need provision in, but I do know because I've seen it moment after moment, time after time, God always comes through every single time. And I know like when you look forward, there's the, the, the natural response is to worry. The natural response is to be stressed. The natural response is to be afraid. That's natural. But we have to push against that and say, no, I'm going to have faith that he's going to provide. I've seen it time after time after time. We have to believe it. He will provide for you. He is Jireh. He is our provider. And our takeaway is this. Praying, give us our daily bread. It teaches us to be content. It teaches us to be faithful. And it teaches us the miraculous. This is what it is when we pray, give us today our daily bread. We're saying, God, teach me to be content. Teach me to be faithful and help me realize that you still do the miraculous.